Okay, so by the time you upgrade the M2 MacBook Air to what many consider the minimum RAM and SSD standards, you're looking at a 400 US dollar price increase. And at that point, why not just spend a little bit more and get the next best thing or the next model up? Okay, so $300 is more than a little more, but you get my point. And that's kind of the classic sales funnel when it comes to technology products, right? The upsell will always get you. And in the case of the 13 and now 15 inch MacBook Air, the next model up is the 14 inch MacBook Pro. But how do they compare? Well, let's talk about some of the key differences between them, including performance, screen, portability, battery life, features, and which one you should spend your hard earned money on. Okay, let's talk performance. Now, for the purpose of this section specifically, I'm comparing the upgraded 15 inch Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM and the 512 gigabyte SSD against the base model 14 inch M2 Pro MacBook Pro that already comes with those upgrades. Now, if you're a basic user looking for emails, web browsing and Word documents and maybe even some short bursts of more intensive tasks like some video or 3D rendering, Performance wise, the 15 inch Air actually does really well. Where it gets interesting though, is for anything more intensive and more regular than those basic activities. The 14 inch MacBook Pro has two massive advantages here that the 15 inch Air does not. Firstly, it's rocking a more powerful M2 Pro chip with two extra CPU cores and six additional GPU cores on top of having double the memory bandwidth which essentially means how quickly the CPU and GPU cores can actually access the unified memory or the RAM on whichever device. Also, the 14 inch Pro has a fan where the air, of course, does not. This allows the 14 to actively cool down and reduce the temperature of the Apple Silicon inside it, resulting in even better sustained performance over the non-Pro M2 chip, which is passively cooled by, well, just a thin slice of metal, really. Now, don't get me wrong, this solution actually works really well in normal situations, but when you really start pushing the MacBook, it results in significant thermal throttling and, of course, a decrease in performance for anything longer than short bursts of maybe a few minutes or so. So because of the extra power and cooling capability on the 14, in every single real-life situation where you're actually pushing either of these chips, the 14 inch MacBook Pro comes out ahead and by a lot. Compiling code is significantly faster on the 14 inch. Same with creative things like the Adobe Suite and of course, anything that involves the GPU like Blender rendering or even gaming. Now, the fanless design of the MacBook Air does of course have some advantages, namely it's much thinner and it is a little bit of a lighter chassis. There's obviously no fan noise ever doesn't have a fan. There's also less moving parts inside, which means less dust inside the case and of course, less parts to potentially fail. But yeah, overall, the performance differences between these two is probably the number one reason you'd buy one over the other. Side note here, if you're buying on Amazon, there will often be deals making the pricing even closer together. I'll leave links in the description that will take you to the best current price so you can check for yourself. Also, a quick message from the sponsor for this section of the video. This is the Soundcore Liberty 4 NC by Anchor. Soundcore's industry-leading noise-canceling system reduces noise by up to 98.5% by using an in-ear sound sensor, high-sensitivity custom driver, and noise isolation chamber. But what really makes noise-canceling impressive is Adaptive Active Noise Cancellation 2.0. It performs real-time calculations and creates a new noise-canceling filter curve for you specifically by adapting to your ear canal shape and environment every time you put on the earbuds. On top of this, you'll get studio quality sound with exceptional clarity and detail thanks to high-res wireless audio certification and LDAC high quality transmission. Liberty 4 NC also features 10 hours of playtime on a single charge and a whopping 50 hours with the charging case. And you can get four hours of battery life from just 10 minutes of charging. Not to mention features like two transparency modes, superior call quality, multi-point connection, and wireless charging. So click the link in the description and shrink the noise wherever you go with Soundcore Liberty 4 NC. Okay, screen size. Now, I find that jumping up or down by two inches, like from say 13 to a 15 inch laptop is really noticeable, but a single inch only really becomes obvious if you have them side by side, like this. For general productivity or 
if you want to split two apps on the screen at once, 15 inches is probably preferable for a bit of extra screen real estate. Although the 14 is still more than usable, albeit slightly more compacted. Here's the Excel test as an example. Everything in green is the extra space you get on the 15 inch. It's a decent amount, but not necessarily a deal breaker. Although just be aware that the technology behind the screen actually differs between these two. The 15 inch air screen uses the same liquid retina technology as other MacBooks. The 14 inch on the other hand is essentially a miniaturized version of Apple's $5,000 Pro Display XDR. It uses mini LED technology instead of the older LCD technology on the 15 inch. The 14 inches display is better in pretty much every way. Colors are nicer, more accurate, and this is especially noticeable when editing photos or videos. Although looking at the specs on the Apple website side by side, you might think that the 14 inches screen gets twice as bright. This is technically true, but only when viewing HDR content in movies or games, for example. In reality, 99% of the time, you'll be watching SDR or standard dynamic range content. And both MacBooks have the same 500 nits of brightness here. The biggest and most noticeable difference between the screens though is ProMotion, which is essentially a fancy marketing term that Apple uses for variable refresh rate screens. Now, the 14 inch screen can refresh or change the colors of individual pixels up to 120 times a second. Or if you're not actually doing anything on the screen and just maybe reading an article, for example, where nothing's actually moving, ProMotion will actually reduce the refresh rate to conserve and save battery. Now, the most important thing here is, I mean, are you actually going to notice ProMotion in day-to-day -day usage? Does it make any kind of difference? Well, in my opinion, it really does. I mean, the higher refresh rate really improves the experience on the 14 inch screen. You'll get buttery smooth scrolling, animations or gaming if it's supported. I mean, I'm not sure if I can ever get comfortable again with the standard 60 Hertz screens on non pro motion MacBooks. Now, moving on to portability, they're actually surprisingly very similar. The 15 inches overall footprint is bigger, but not by a huge amount. It's about 90 grams or 0.2 pounds lighter, which you can't tell when actually holding both of them in your hands. Really the only significant difference is the thickness. And to be fair, the 14 inch is actually already quite thin in relation to other 14 inch laptops out there. Now in terms of other feature differences, I mean, they're all superior on the 14 inch. I mean, it has Wi-Fi 6E. So if you have a 6E capable router, you'll see improved network speeds, a better studio quality three mic array. So although the 1080p webcams are the same on both MacBooks, your voice will come across slightly cleaner and clearer on the Pro. And of course, better port selection. I mean, you get the same two Thunderbolt 4 ports, MagSafe charger and 3.5 millimeter audio jack, but the 14 inch has an additional Thunderbolt port, HDMI port, and of course the SD card slot. Also the MacBook Air can actually only output to a single external screen. So that's a pretty big deal if you're someone who regularly connects your MacBook to an external monitor. And if you're interested in speaker differences, take a listen. Now, a quick note about battery. This one is kind of hard to compare. I mean, they're both different form factor laptops with different screens, internal battery sizes, and versions of Apple Silicon inside them. For just straight up browsing the web or writing email type tasks, the Air actually comes out ahead. I mean, it uses barely any battery during normal tasks. And although the Pro is still you know, very impressive in terms of battery life, I mean, you'll get 12 to 14 hours of web browsing. On average, it needs just a little bit more juice to run when compared to the 15. That being said, again, for more intensive things, even though the battery life on the Pro isn't quite as good, remember that when it comes to completing more difficult tasks like a render or code compilation or exporting photos, for example, it does it so much quicker and more efficiently than the Air, which overall will use less battery. So it really depends what you plan on doing on these MacBooks. But the most important thing to take away here is that 
Both of these have really good battery life. Like it's, it's kind of insane compared to other computers out there. I mean, you don't really have to make a compromise when choosing which one in terms of battery life. Overall, which one should you get? Well, this comparison only makes sense if you're wanting at least 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. If you don't, which means you probably aren't really doing anything super demanding or intensive, just get the 15 inch base model. I mean, it's great, it's got pretty good performance and it's way cheaper than the 14 inch when it's spec'd at its base model. So eight gigabytes of RAM and just the 256 gigabyte SSD. But if you're planning on doing anything more intensive and regularly where that M2 chip is going to be getting toasty and you also need the 16 gigs of RAM and upgraded SSD, go for the 14 inch. I mean, it is a better laptop in almost every way compared to the 15 inch. And there's really not that much difference when it comes to price, once this is spec and portability. This is actually my laptop of choice that I use for pretty much everything at the moment. And don't forget, you can buy the previous 2021 14 inch M1 Pro version for a pretty big discount at the moment. It has all the same features on the M2 Pro, just a little bit less performance due to the less powerful chip. Apart from that, thanks for watching.